Maria Grazia plena, Maria Grazia plena. Good morning, and welcome to St. Ignatius of Loyola Catholic Church. Please take a moment to silence your cell phones or kind of any kind of electronic device that you might have. Turn them to the silent or off position. Let us go ahead and stand and join in singing our gathering hymn found on your worship aid, Be Not Afraid. shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your word. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Friends, in the waters of baptism, our brother died with Christ and rose with him to new life. And on that day, he was signed with the cross, being claimed for Christ Jesus. And so now we pray that our brother Ed may share in the victory of Christ and the victory over death and sin together. We come together today to pray for our brother, to assist him with our prayer and his transition of life. We also pray for ourselves this day that we too may be comforted in the hope and promises of our own baptisms. We learned in our early lives that the Lord God loves us to the point of death, and beyond death, he was raised from the grave to new life so that we could have new life. Yet we come as sinners. We come knowing that we need the mercy of God. We come acknowledging our sins to celebrate the mercy that is ours now and in the future. Let us acknowledge those sins as we celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have given us the consolation of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, and may the soul of Ed, your servant, be welcomed into eternal joy. For as you were pleased to create him in your own image and adopt him as your own, so command, we pray, that he may have a share in your inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated now as we are strengthened by the word of God proclaimed. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing way away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if in the eyes of men Indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offering, he took them to himself. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with his elect. The word of the Lord. shepherd there is nothing I shall want fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose near restful waters he leads me he, he revives my soul the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want he guides me along the right path for the sake of his name though I should walk in the valley of the shadow of death no evil would I fear, for you are with me. Your crook and staff will give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a table before me in the of my foes my head you have anointed with oil my cup is overflowing the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell for length of days unending. The Lord is my shepherd. There 
there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now, a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you'd be seated, please. He could not see Jesus because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. Zacchaeus 
was, as we say in our day and time, vertically challenged. He couldn't see Jesus because of the people around him. And all throughout our life, we seek to find Jesus. And it's oftentimes people around us that prevent us from seeing Jesus. They block the view. They block our opportunities. They keep us from being able to move forward in our life of transition and conversion. And so what did Zacchaeus do? He climbed a tree. He climbed a tree. And the people made fun of him. He was a tax collector. He was someone of importance in town that people feared. And when they saw this man climbing a tree, they laughed at him. I remember once praying with this gospel and praying in the way that St. Ignatius teaches us to use your imagination. Think of it like making a Disney movie, okay, kiddos? So when you read this, think, how would I see this in a movie? And where am I? Am I sitting there and all of that? So that's what St. Ignatius teaches us to do with Scripture. And I remember Zacchaeus saying, I would risk acting like a monkey to see Jesus. I would do anything I could. Brothers and sisters, because of who we are as a community of faith, our responsibility and our call is to make it easier for other people to witness Jesus, especially as he's working in our lives. When Ed was confined to home, he didn't stop being Catholic. He didn't stop wanting to see Jesus. So people like David Bernson and Deacon Scott and Father Justin went to Ed to open the pathway so that he could not only see Jesus, but receive him in Holy Communion. To allow Ed, in the brokenness of his body, to come in union with God to know his strength. That's what it means to be community to each other. That's what it means to be in support with each other. Too often we say, oh, uh, my thoughts and prayers are with you. But what does that mean? Are they words, empty words, or are they actions that we do? Ed was an altar boy back in the day. He's only one year older than me, so I, when he served Mass, I know exactly what he, how he served Mass. And it wasn't easy in those days. You had to learn Latin and movement and all this kind of stuff. And that instilled in him a part of his faith that began a journey of strength for him. He was proud of his Catholic faith and willing to share it. No matter where he was, no matter what he did, God was always a part of that life. I find it very, very interesting uh, when you uh, look at someone's lifespan and you think to yourself, how was God making all this stuff happen? So, you know, Ed's a geologist, okay, so he's with rocks and oil and gas and all that. And then he goes to school again and becomes a lawyer, but then his resume is he's working for banks. So I don't know if he was digging for gold for the banks or what. But it's that life journey that we look at sometimes and can't put all the pieces together that God is working in the midst of calling us beyond ourselves, bringing us to greater responsibility in our life of faith. And then in the year 2000, in the millennial, millennium year, when everything was supposed to shut down, he meets Sherry. Life changed, it did. All the warnings of all of Y2K and all that did happen to him, and his life changed became a husband, father, and then soon a grandfather. The love that extends beyond this moment into the future. And in all of that, faith was shared. He removed obstacles so that Sherry could see the faith that he had and the faith that he lived in such a way that Sherry was called to share in this faith. And children too. 
Father Justin was telling me right before Mass, he uh, was in conversation with Ed the last time he was there. And um, Ed asked Father Justin for a favor, and that was to pray for the grandchildren. See how much your grandfather loved you. And the greatest gift he can give to you is Jesus, of knowing who Jesus is. You know, obstacles are removed for us as well. Yes, Ed was confined to a chair in these last years, and the last seven years have been very, very difficult. But just because Father Justin and I and Deacon Scott are all dressed like this doesn't necessarily mean our life of faith is absolutely tip-top. Now, Father Justin will argue with me about that, of course, because his is tip-top. So I'll take him out of the equation and just talk about me. But visiting Ed, spending time with Ed, also removed obstacles for us to grow deeper into our life of faith. We priests are also human. And I'm going to tell off on this guy because I, I really love him a lot, Father Justin. It really brought him to deep prayer and a little bit of tear. He tried to fight it, but it was there the last time he went to visit Ed. He says, you know, we're not supposed to know the day nor the hour. And he says, what must it be like? Total trust in Christ is what it's like. To know that my last breath, as St. Ignatius says in the Sushipe prayer, even the last breath you give me, I give to you. For all that I am, all that I have is yours because it came from you. Ed found solace in his life in music. There's something about music that takes you out of yourself. There's something about music that moves us beyond this moment to the next. That's why music is integrated into our liturgy, because it keeps us going upward and taking us out of ourselves and moving on. And, you know, Ed was into rock and roll and jazz and all the different things, but how many of us have spent time just sitting there listening to music and forget all our worries? We forget all the obstacles of life, and we say, God, that's great. God, that's great. See where we go to God. For even in this music that moves our souls and brings us together as a people, God is moving in all of that. Jesus loved to go to wedding feasts. Remember, his first miracle was at a wedding feast where there was music and dancing and not enough wine. So what did he say? He didn't say, come on, boys, let's go home. Instead, he listened to his mother and he made more wine the best for the joy of the people. When we look at Ed's life as a life journey of faith, we also are called to look at our own. We have to examine ourselves and ask ourselves, am I keeping others from seeing Jesus, or am I finding ways, no matter where I am in my life, to look beyond this moment to come to know the Lord. In the first reading today, we heard these words. The souls of the just are in the hands of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead. Their passing away was thought of as an affliction, and they're going forth from us, utter destruction. They are in peace. The Book of Wisdom gives us the opportunity to see beyond this moment and not let Ed's death be an obstacle to us to come closer to the Lord. That as Ed prayed for us in his own suffering, as Ed grew closer to Christ in communion with Christ, by receiving the blood of Christ, because that's all he could receive, he was being tested, tried, 
and found worthy of God. As gold in the furnace, he proved them. As a sacrificial offering, he took them to himself. To be limited in human capacity did not limit God in his capacity of being God. Not to be able to swallow solid food, even the consecrated host, Ed then received the precious blood of Christ as often as possible. For it was the blood of Christ in which we are washed clean. It's the blood of Christ that calls us beyond ourselves from death to life. It's the blood of Christ that flows within us, that gives us life even as our bodies decay and fall away. See, that's our faith. That's the way we Christians see this. This is the way we Christians believe that there is no obstacle for God to reach out to us. That he can reach to us, commune with us, be one with us in such a way that he's willing to give us his own blood that we may have life. Jerry, I know these last years have been difficult. Every day is a new day. Every week is different. Every moment is a question mark. And yet I do know from having spoken to you and to Father and to Deacon and David at different times through these years that our brother Ed found peace in God even in his suffering. Even as he let go of his physical body he was preparing for the spiritual journey that would bring him to that citizenship in heaven that Paul speaks about. That's all our journeys. That's what we're about. Our true citizenship is in heaven, and all of us are here temporarily. But we do the best we can while we're here to bring joy to people, the dancing, the laughing, the music, removing obstacles so that they can see Christ, bringing others closer to the Lord that we know is one with us, so that together, as our ritual will say later, we will see Ed and enjoy his friendship again when we are all united in that kingdom of heaven. May the Eucharist we celebrate today strengthen you. May the Eucharist we celebrate today Give us the courage to keep going forward as the Eucharist gave Ed the courage to face the challenges of each day. He found new ways to express his love. He found new ways to show his presence through his eyes, through his computerized chair and all of these things. And we trust that God will find new ways to allow us to continue growing closer to him even during this crazy time of pandemic, that we may be united together in the love that God has for our brother and for us, and that by virtue of our baptism, we will be with that as well. May God bless you on this day. May he strengthen you, and may Ed continue to inspire us from the other side that our longing will be to be with God. God bless you. God, our Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. And so it is with confidence now that we ask him to save all his people, the living and the dead. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Ed, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother, 
who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother, Ed, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who called your servant Edward to serve you in affliction and sickness, grant, we pray, that he who followed your son's example of suffering may also receive the reward of his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated now as the altar and the gifts are prepared and joined together in our song of preparation.
Brothers and sisters, if this my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant our supplication, we pray, O Lord, that this sacrifice may benefit your departed servant, Ed, since through its offering you have loosed the offenses of all the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For even though by our own fault we perish, yet by your compassion and your grace, when seized by death according to our sins, we are redeemed through Christ's great victory and with him called back into life. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Neil. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and, and drink, drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Edward, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Being mindful of physical distancing, let us offer one another a sign of peace. Thank you. 
salvation was totally brought in blood from all my sins and from those of you. And we were faithful to your commandments. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter you. under my roof, but Lord, only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The Cardinal Archbishop has asked for certain protocols during this time of the pandemic so I'd like to review those protocols for the reception of Holy Communion with all of you at this time. We ask that you please stay in your pew until the Minister of Hospitality indicates it's time for you to leave the pew. If you're not with members of your own household, remember that we are also asked to keep that social distancing, one group from the other, and there are marks on the pew, on the floors to help you uh, maintain that distancing. For those of you who will be coming forward to receive Holy Communion and in your worship aid, there's a, a little block there that describes who can receive Holy Communion in the Catholic Church. Those of you that will be coming forward for the reception of Holy Communion, please leave your mask on the entire time with your nose and your mouth covered. And then as you receive Holy Communion, the minister will say the body of Christ and you respond, amen, just like usual. And then communion is placed in the hand, and we ask you to please flatten your hand. Don't try to grab from us. If our hands touch, we have to re-sanitize our hands. And so once you have received Holy Communion, take about four to six steps off to the side, lower, raise your mask to receive, and then to return back to the pew. Traffic is always one way in the aisles during this time. And if you brought any personal hand sanitizer with you, you might want to apply some of it before you come forward, uh, just to assure our safety and yours at this time. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. As we come to the table to receive the Lord, let us join in singing our communion song, Taste and See.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of eternal life, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for the soul of your servant Edward, that, freed from the bonds of mortality, he may now join the company of the redeemed. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Father Justin, as I mentioned in my homily, would often visit with Ed and bring Ed Holy Communion, as did Deacon and um, David Bernson. And so I've asked Father Justin, since he prayed so often with Ed and was in conversation with him, if he would have the last word today and do the final farewell and the commendation. Father? Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother, and may our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. We now incense Ed's body as a preparation for his burial. And so as Father incenses Ed's body, let us join together in singing our final song of farewell. Oh, 
into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Ed in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Ed in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our community has the practice of inscribing the names of our loved ones into our book of remembrance. Sometimes it's even called the book of life, for life is changed, not ended. Ed now enjoys that new life with Christ, and, and inscribing his name is a reminder to us that while we pray for Ed, he prays and intercedes for us in the presence of God. So Sherry, I invite you to come forward now to inscribe Ed's name in our book of remembrance. God loved the world so much that he sent his only son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to be like us in all things but sin. Jesus went to the cross for us to save us from that sin. And God loved him beyond the grave and raised him from the dead. And thus the cross becomes a sign and symbol of our belief together in the power of God's love for us as a people. And so we present this cross to you that rested upon your husband's casket. May it be a visible reminder to all of God's love through sin and death to the glory of resurrection. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. The family will escort the casket out at this time. And then once we have left the church, uh, we invite you all to remain seated, uh, continuing in the song if it's still being sung, and uh, wait for the hospitality ministers to indicate that you may leave the church, keeping that safe distance, keeping your mask on until you pass through the last doors. Words we hear from him who 
Seated. 